a new treatment for agitation in the emergency department or your inpatient unit? Here's a randomized trial of a new oral treatment option. It's company-sponsored, but reassuringly, the company had no access to the trial results until after the study was completed. On the other hand, some of the authors work for the company, and that's not reassuring. Well, the drug is still worth learning about, so keep your skeptics' glasses on and let's have a look. Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. I suspect nearly everyone in our profession has had enough experience with acutely agitated patients that you need no convincing. The more tools we have to cope with aggressive, angry, over-energized patients, the better everyone will be, especially if something new is convincingly lower in overall risk. If not, it better look extremely effective compared to current approaches to justify unknown longer-term risks and its likely high costs. So what do we have here? That's dexmedetomidine, an alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonist that's been around since 1999 as an intravenous drug used for sedation of intubated patients in intensive care. Now, a pharmaceutical company has come up with a way to deliver dexmedetomidine sublingually using a dissolvable film. They've just published a randomized trial in patients with a diagnosis of schizophrenia following an earlier study in patients with a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Well, you know, we could save some time here. Published articles like this are just about guaranteed to show that the company drug is better than a placebo. So let's just jump to the adverse effects table. If a new drug has hardly any more adverse effects than placebo, then maybe it's worth checking it out further. Then we'll go back and look at efficacy. Well, the main adverse effect of dexmedetomidine is somnolence, experienced by 20 to 25% of patients versus 5 to 8% of patients on placebo. The other notable problem was hypotension, 5 to 6% of patients on dexmedetomidine versus zero on placebo. Still interested? All right, then, how much better was dexmedetomidine compared to placebo? In this study, the primary outcome measure was a subset of items from the PANS, the venerable positive and negative syndrome scale that's been used in schizophrenia research for decades. 20 minutes after oral administration, the placebo agitation score had dropped 2.5 points versus 4 points on dexmedetomidine. On this subscale, that 1.5 point difference is statistically significant, but is it Clinically significant? The authors say, quote, there is no consensus on the change in this score that represents the minimal clinically important difference, close quote. But we don't have to speculate because the authors offer another outcome measure, the clinical global improvement scale, meaning subjective ratings of change from observers. On that scale, there was no observable difference between the groups at 30 minutes. It took until an hour after administration for patients on dexmedetomidine to be judged less agitated than patients on placebo, according to a supplementary table. Before we wrap up then, parenthetically, here's a nice trick. In these two papers about dexmedetomidine, the company-associated authors listed adverse effects by frequency in the first paper and alphabetically in the second publication, so that somnolence switched from the top of the list to the bottom. Nice trick. In summary, then, dexmedetomidine was not dramatically better than a placebo for rapid oral management of agitation. For a bigger picture look at current treatment options, a team of emergency physicians wrote an excellent paper that's linked in the references.